Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. I'm Barry Schiffman, director of the Banff International String Quartet Competition. We are thrilled to welcome you here to Kerner Hall for the announcement of the 10 quartets invited to the Banff International String Quartet Competition happening this summer in Banff, Alberta. We're going to start this announcement with a performance by the 2016 first place winners, the Rolston String Quartet, performing the Andante Cantabile from Tchaikovsky String Quartet No. 1. Ladies and gentlemen, the Rolston Quartet.
Bravo. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. I'm Janice Price, President and CEO of BAMP Center for Arts and Creativity. And on behalf of all of us in Banff, I'd like to welcome some special guests here with us also this morning. Uh, our Vice President of Arts and Leadership, Howard Jang. I hope you'll all get an opportunity to chat with him and speak with him a little later. We have our Toronto-based Board of Governor representative, Mr. Andy Cannons is with us today. And also Board of Maritime member, Mr. Lauren Barkley uh, is joined us. So Banff is in Toronto. <laughs> Just picture those beautiful mountains in the background. You could be there. Um, I do, of course, want to kick off this morning with a big thank you uh, to the Rolston String Quartet. They have been wonderful laureate representatives uh, for the BIS competition. I am so grateful to you for joining us this morning to perform. Uh, at this exciting announcement here at the beautiful Galleria at Kerner Hall in Toronto and live streamed on the Violin Channel. So welcome to those joining us from afar for this hot off the press news about the upcoming competition taking place in Banff this August. As current laureate, the Rolston Quartet is an example of how the Banff International String Quartet competition affectionately known as BISC, propels the careers of all the musicians who take part. It has been three years since the Ralston Quartet received this transformational prize from Banff Center. And as part of the award, Banff Center organizes an international tour for the winning quartet. They can attest that we have actually come across each other uh, both at their concerts around the globe and in many airport lounges. <laughs> Um, and so we do organize this international tour for the winning quartet in addition to the cash prize and the recordings and the Ralstons went on to perform for audiences in over 50 North American and European cities. Since winning BISC in 2016, they have received many further accolades. The Cleveland Quartet Award from Chamber Music America, the Fellowship Quartet in Residence at Yale University, where they were as up to yesterday uh, afternoon, I believe. And last December, they made their spectacular debut at Carnegie Hall. Banff Center is so proud of this incredibly talented quartet and what they've accomplished. Please join me in thanking them again for joining us here this morning. I also want to thank my good friend and colleague, the Executive Director of Performing Arts for the Royal Conservatory of Music, Mervon Mehta, and his wonderful staff for welcoming us to this venue for today's announcement. BAMP Center partners with leading arts organizations across the country because we know that by working together, we can propel and support the careers of artists in all performance disciplines. So the occasion we're here for is, of course, the announcement of the 10 quartets selected from applicants across the world to perform and compete this summer at the Triennial Banff International String Quartet Competition. A tremendous amount of planning goes into hosting this international competition every three years. It requires exceptional organization and support by a team that is led by the incomparable Barry Schiffman, director of the Banff International String Quartet Competition and also of the Banff International String Quartet Festival, which was launched in 2017 and is mounted in non-competition years. So Barry will be speaking in a few moments about what's in store for BISC 2019. But before he shares this exciting news, Banff Center is proud that today we are joined by the Azriele Foundation, the lead supporter of the 2019 BISC competition. BAMP Center is thankful to be working with the Azriele Foundation on this internationally recognized competition. So I'd now like to introduce Jason Van Eyck, Manager of Music Initiatives at the Foundation to say a few words on their behalf. Jason, welcome.
Thanks very much, Janice. And really, it is my pleasure to be here today representing the Azraeli Foundation, and especially for today's exciting announcement. The Azraeli Foundation believes that music is a vital human endeavor that allows us to express our creativity, to end, expand our worldviews, and to be able to foster cultural exchanges. The, through the Azraeli Music Initiatives, we are committed to supporting organizations that discover, elevate, and amplify artistic voices, granting broad access to meaningful musical experiences that exhibit artistic excellence. It's for these reasons that we're proud to support the Banff Center, and especially the Banff International String Quartet Competition. Our support to BISC is an important part of a larger commitment made by the Foundation to organizations that benefit emerging talent in the classical music field. Among them are the Honens International Piano Competition, Le Concours Musical International de Montréal, and the Charette Scholarship Program of the Canada-Israel Cultural Foundation. We feel privileged to help facilitate the professional journeys of gifted musicians in partnership with these institutions and are proud to help them cultivate significant talent in Canada and in Israel that's ready for the world stage. As I'm sure many of you know, it's often challenging to feel grounded in those first substantial stages of your career. We find this to be the case in many fields, whether it's in music or in science or with scientists and professors. Um, this is why the Israeli Foundation invests in talented individuals just as they're gaining their footing in their chosen profession, whether they be young musicians in a string quartet or early career researchers in the lab. We take that chance on new talent because we believe it's vital to cultivate their potential to help advance the health, wellness, and prosperity of our communities. On these grounds, we're delighted to be supporting Band Center and sustaining BISC as a Made in Canada initiative with global impact. This is a wonderful partner with remarkable vision, integrity, and reputation. Today, more than ever, making music is a bold yet essential act. In fact, to paraphrase the great Leonard Bernstein, we must make music more intensely, more beautifully, and more devotedly than ever before. Congratulations to all of the contenders who will be named today. Thank you for your devotion and for your making our world more beautiful through music. I look forward to celebrating you in Banff. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the director of the Banff International String Quartet Competition, Barry Schiffman, to announce the contenders for the 2019 competition. Barry? All right, thank you, Jason. Uh, a warm thank you to Janice and all of our friends who have traveled from Banff to be here in Toronto. And um, a remarkable performance that opened this announcement with the Ralston Quartet. Janice alluded to the fact that just yesterday afternoon they were still residents in New Haven um, at Yale University. They had an 11 hour drive back to Canada and we are thrilled to welcome them back home. Um, I know you all want to know the, um, the names of the quartets, and I will we'll share those in just a minute, but I want to give you a bit of history um, about String Quartet at Banff Center for Arts and Creativity. Um, when Vikram Seth was writing his novel, An Equal Music, which explores the relationships in a string quartet, he references, through his research, that when the quartet in that book went away to study in the summer, they went to Banff. Um, Banff is synonymous with chamber music and specifically with the art of the string quartet. And here's why. When Banff moved towards year-round professionalized training of classical musicians in the mid-70s, the then directors, Tom and Isabel Rolston, held chamber music and string quartet playing at the top. And as an example of that commitment to the art form, they offered lifetime artist in residence status to the legendary Zoltan Zekai, who was the first violinist of the famed Hungarian Quartet. To give perspective to the, the gravitas of this, this giant that came to live out um, the remaining decades of his life in Banff, he was Bela Bartok's recital partner. He premiered the second violin concerto of Bartok. He premiered many of the string quartets of Bartok. So the result was that in this tiny mountain town, the great string quartets in the world would make pilgrimage, and you'd go to Lloyd Hall, and you'd knock on the door, and Zoltan, this wonderful old man, would open the door and bring you into his world 
And so he was the living connection to the past. And I remember as a young person in the St. Lawrence Quartet making that pilgrimage to Banff. I remember my colleagues in the Borromeo Quartet doing the same, the Ying Quartet, the Takash Quartet. So many quartets went to Banff to study. So when Banff was looking to celebrate their 50-year anniversary in 1983, Ken Murphy, who was working in Banff at the time, decided a string quartet competition would make sense. It was supposed to be a one-time event. And so they launched this quartet, and the first public performances had about 35 people in the room. The CBC at the time would take the recordings that they made in the first competition, drive them down the road to Calgary, and broadcast them across the nation on the national radio. The result was that by the end of the week, they had broken their records for listenership in classical music. People were driving to Banff. They moved to the big hall to accommodate this massive outpouring of support for string quartet. And the rest is really, um, it truly, in our, in our paradigm, it is, it is legendary. So what happens in Banff is not just that great string quartets like the Rolston come and perform, but hundreds and hundreds of listeners from around the world descend upon the town and soak in every note of music these young people play. So I will tell you about all the remarkable gifts we are going to bestow on our winners. The fact that they're gonna play concerts around the world, that we're gonna make recordings for them. But really the biggest gift that anybody can give to any young musician is give them a room full of listeners. And I'm so proud that in Banff, we don't fight for that. Uh, we, we sell out every competition because there is an interest in this art form and in seeing young people take this art form on. So I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, this year at the competition, uh, we reviewed roughly 40 um, applications from around the world. And that was done, I should say, for the record, I have nothing to do with the results. I don't vote. I hire the most fantastic jurors from around the world. And I'm very happy. I look out, I see my dear friend Jonathan Crow, uh, violinist in the New Orford Quartet, concertmaster of the Toronto Symphony, um, a former BAMP faculty member. Jonathan was one of the three preliminary jurors. Thank you, Jonathan, for being here. From the 2013 competition, the wonderful violist Milena Payara Vanderstadt from the Dover Quartet, she was on our jury. And from the St. Lawrence Quartet at Stanford University, uh, my former colleague in that group, Christopher Costanza, the cellist. So those three preliminary juries reviewed all of the, the files, and then uh, we came together, and, and uh, remarkably, the results were very clear. And um, so I will share with you um, the, the 10 quartets, and then I'll tell you a little more detail as to what they're going to receive if they should win. So, from the United States, the Callisto Quartet. Um, from Germany, Russia, and Canada, the Elliott Quartet. From the UK, the Marmon Quartet. From the USA, the Omer Quartet. From France, Quartour Agate. From France again, Quartour Elmire. From the UK, the Ruizi Quartet from Canada, the USA, and Taiwan, the Ulysses Quartet, from the USA and Spain, the Vera Quartet, from Canada and the USA, the Viano String Quartet. Those are the 10 quartets that will come to Banff for a week of extraordinary music making. And just getting into um, that list of 10 is, is recognition that they are playing at the top of their game. So congratulations to them. So a little bit of uh, what happens in Banff. I mentioned that all of these hundreds of listeners descend on this town. In addition to attending the concerts, which are three per day, most days of the week, starting at 10.30, they sit, they take in every note played, and then there's a whole myriad of other programming that goes on, which we initially offered thinking we should offer something other than I mean, who would want to sit all day and listen to this? Well, now what happens is, Whatever we offer them, in addition to sitting all day and listening to the quartet competition performances, they go to that. So here's a typical day in Banff. Hundreds of people looking out over the Bow Valley enjoying a meal at the Three Ravens restaurant. Um, 
nine o'clock a lecture. And that lecture might be by um, an architect, it might be by a violin maker, it may be by a composer. Uh, we, we curate a wonderful series of guests that come. Concert one starts at 10.30, another shared meal at noon, concert two at 2.30, that ends. Now a master class, not for the quartets that are competing, but for our Young Artists Program. We welcome um, a half dozen uh, young groups from across Canada. We're talking young, eight, nine, 10, 11, some from the Royal Conservatory, some from Vancouver, and they attend master classes and get to hear the great quartets competing. Another shared meal, another performance. Now you'd think at the end of the day, <laughs> this audience, which I should say, not made up of teenagers for the most part. Um, you think it would be bedtime, but no. They descend upon the bar, not to drink so much, but because we set up an irreverent jam session every night. And at that jam session, young musicians are playing with older musicians. Members of the audience are playing with competing quartets. The love of chamber music, highbrow, is brought down and we remember um, that this is just about having fun and communicating and so that's how the days in Banff end and it's a beautiful thing to watch so um, uh, we are counting down the days now until the end of August to get back there because every three years magic happens in Banff. The winner of this competition, this competition um, exceeds the benefits of anything we've ever put on in the past. So the prize package for the first place laureate is valued at over $300,000. Um, there will be three concert tours of Europe. There will be concert tours across Canada and the US. And thanks to our uh, new partner, Southern Methodist University, who run the Peak Fellowship residency at their school, um, we are partnering with Southern Methodist so that our first place laureates are offered this two-year paid residency at SMU in Dallas. And we have with us today Andres Diaz, who is both a member of the faculty at Southern Methodist University and here also at the Glenn Gould School. So thank you, Andres, for joining us. Um, we, we were thrilled about this opportunity at Southern Methodist because the success of a string quartet in today's world is tied directly to their ability to be relevant to a university setting. That's the legacy in North America. The string quartet in residence idea was born here, and we can now give these skills of developing that opportunity through this SMU partnership, the Peak Fellowship. So we're very, very happy about that. We're also, as Janice mentioned, thrilled to have our new uh, lead sponsors, our new partners, the Azrieli Foundation. Jason, thank you for your kind words. And I know that our work in supporting emerging careers is exactly, as you pointed out, aligned with the mission of the foundation. We're excited about um, those opportunities. Um, thank you, yeah. We're gonna conclude um, our coming together for this exciting announcement with a, a final performance by the Rolston Quartet. But before we do that, I want to also acknowledge uh, my, my dear friends and colleagues at the Royal Conservatory, Mervan Mehta, um, Executive Director of Performing Arts here, who uh, welcomed us into this uh, very special space and who has engaged, written a check, paid our winners to perform in Kerner Hall, every winner since he's taken the job. So I'm thrilled about that. And as we spoke before, um, before the performance today, he's already cooking up all sorts of ideas for the next winners and for past winners. So thank you, Mervon. Um, to all of our friends watching on Violin Channel, we hope that you will tune in during the competition if you don't make it out to Banff. Um, I know I tune into the Violin Channel daily, so exciting that uh, we get this, um, this format to share our, our music making. Um, the last work uh, that the, the Extraordinary Rolston will play um, is from the same string quartet you heard earlier, the first string quartet of Tchaikovsky, you heard the Andante Cantabile. They'll close with the scherzo from that uh, um, quartet, which they have just recorded. Um, in Europe and which will be released in the coming months. So we're excited about that. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us this morning and thank you to the Rolston. Here is the Rolston String Quartet with Tchaikovsky's Scherzo from the first String Quartet in D major.
Um, your laureates for still another few months, so enjoy it. I hope you can stay for a little while. I know some of our guests would love to speak with you. Um, also, now that the quartets are out of the bag, as it were, we have copies of the press release that will now be uh, fully distributed and you can begin your homework for everything that Barry described to you by now getting familiar with the wonderful 10 global quartets that we'll be welcoming uh, to beautiful Banff in uh, late summer and fall. Thank you all again for coming and I hope we'll see many of you in Banff.